Hi everyone and welcome to Power Electronics Lectures. In this video, I will talk about uh, how to design the boost converter. So what we care about here in the boost converter is that uh, we need to find uh, values for the capacitors and the inductors in the boost converter. We know that if we increase the value of the inductor, the ripple inside the inductor current uh, will be decreased and uh, similarly if we increase the capacitor value the ripple on the output will be decreased but now we need to understand or we need to know how much the value of the capacitor and the inductor uh, should be so if we come back to the um, mode of operations of the boost converter you will find that when this active switch is conducting so this will be short circuit and the current will flow in this direction again here we have the current in the inductor the current will be increasing il will be increasing at this point again we assume that we have a linear operation here because we have uh, like high switching frequency one kilohertz five kilohertz and so on and the time here from zero to delta ts is very small so this uh, allows a linear operation for the current to be increased of course if we decrease the switching uh, frequency this operation or this uh, curve uh, will be something like this and our analysis will not be necessarily uh, uh, accurate so now when the switch is off uh, we said that uh, this switch will be open circuit and the current that was installed inside the inductor will push this diode to be conducting so the current will be flowing in this direction and the transistor because it's an active transistor active switch and there's no any orders sent to this transistor it will be off or open circuit so uh, the behavior of the current will be something like this and uh, delta il in this case it will be how much it will be v input over l times delta ts uh, v input over l here is the slope and delta ts is the time period from here to here now this is the ripple inside uh, the inductor delta il the difference from here to here in order to find the value of the inductor so we said simply l is equal to how much delta times v input the time the switching time will be down here as a switching frequency so this will be switching frequency times delta i l and this is the value for the inductor at a specific ripple if you know the value of the duty cycle the input voltage the switching frequency and uh, the the ripple that we do want to exceed for example we can easily find the value of the inductor now let's go and find uh, the value of the capacitor using uh, similar analysis if you look at the current on the capacitor here you'll find that this current on the capacitor uh, will be equal to um, when the switch is conducting or when the switch is on so this diode will be off to be short circuit so the diode current will be zero at this point right at this moment from zero to delta ts because the diode will be off is not conducting and this is the of course this is id the diode current uh, when the switch is off we said that the diode will be conducting and the current uh, on the diode uh, it will be uh, uh, same as uh, the current that's coming from the inductor it will be the same current so here if you go if you try to draw the uh, the current inside the inductor it will be the same portion as the inductor current we said also because this converter must achieve a balanced operation so the, the average current inside this capacitor must be equal to zero and of course the average voltage in on the on the inductor must be equal to zero so if you try to find the current that is applied on this capacitor ic so you will find that when the time uh, when the switch is on uh, the diode is uh, not conducting its open circuit and the current that is flowing inside the resistor here on the load it will be exactly same as the current that is flowing in the capacitor so, and because it's in the opposite direction this should be minus v out over r if we say this ts and this delta ts this area delta q here must be exactly same as this area now we can use this information here from zero to delta ts to find the charge inside the capacitor and use this information to find 
how much the uh, voltage uh, ripple should be on the output voltage. So delta Q here, delta TS, the duration time from here to here, times V out over R. And this will be delta V out over R times the switching frequency. And uh, we know that uh, we have a relation between the charge Q and the output voltage. It will be equal to how much Q is equal to C times V, the voltage that is applied on the capacitor. And small change of this will be delta V out. So we can simply say that delta V out is equal to how much? We can just divide by C. So delta V out in, it will be delta times V out over R. C times the switching frequency and this is the uh, voltage ripple on the capacitor. If you try to find this voltage ripple as a percentage of the total output voltage you can say that delta V out over the output voltage is equal to delta over RC times the switching frequency and from this equation we can say that the capacitor voltage is equal to delta over R times the switching frequency times delta V out over V out. And this is the value of the capacitor at certain ripple. So here we can specify the ripple, voltage ripple on the output. And if we know the resistor value switching frequency duty cycle, of course we can assign the capacitor value. Let's have a simple example, uh, design example for this one. Um, the example says that we have a boost converter that we need to design or we need to assign the capacitor value and the inductor value for this uh, converter to achieve a specific ripple. But the question says that uh, this input voltage is connected to a PV panel and this PV panel voltage is changing from uh, 5 volt to 8 volt. Of course, you'll find that the PV panel is not uh, within this range. Um, it can be like 30 volt for one panel. This is just uh, for uh, simplification and to solve this example. And uh, the output voltage must be maintained at 10 volt. So the question says that uh, we need to design this uh, boost converter to, to make sure that uh, the ripple on the inductor does not exceed 20% of the average inductor current and uh, the ripple on the capacitor side shouldn't exceed 4% of the output voltage value. The output voltage must be maintained at uh, 10 volt. The input voltage is changing from 5 volt to 8 volt. And the output resistance is equal to 10 ohms. Uh, the switching frequency is assigned to be 20 kilohertz. So that's it. We need to design this uh, converter and give uh, values for the capacitor and the inductor. Now, how to think about this question? Now, in order we have a range of operations or range of voltages on the input here. So the input voltage is changing from 5 volt to 8 volt. But the out, this is the input voltage. But the output voltage is fixed at 10 volt. So we need to find the uh, range of the duty cycles that can achieve this uh, operation. So let's uh, consider the duty cycle when the input voltage is small and the output voltage is 10 volt. So for the boost converter, uh, delta is V out minus V input over V out. And um, in this case, uh, V out is 10 minus 5 over 10. It will be how much? 0.5. So this is the duty cycle in this case. The average inductor current from the previous lecture, uh, you can say that uh, V input over 1 minus delta squared time r is equal to how much? The input voltage is 5. 1 minus 0.5 squared times r, which is 10. Uh, the average inductor current is equal to 2 amperes. Now we need to make sure that the ripple uh, for this 2 ampere does not exceed 20%. So we need to find the ripple in this case, which is delta il must equal to 20% of this current which is how much? 20% times 2 is 0.4 amperes. So this is the uh, ripple that uh, we need to use in order to find uh, the inductor value. So the inductor value, the, uh, the terminal, let's say, of the inductor value on the two cycle is equal to 0.5 is equal to how much? 
L is equal to delta times V input over switching frequency times the uh, ripple, which is 312.5 micro Henry. So this is one value for the inductor. Let's repeat the procedure again when the input voltage is 8 volt. Now when the input voltage is 8 volt and the output voltage is 10 volt, so the duty cycle will be how much? Is 0.2 and uh, the inductor current again, the average inductor current is equal to V input over 1 minus delta squared times R, which is 1.25 amperes. Again, the ripple delta IL must be 20% of this current which is how much 0.25 amperes now you can easily find the inductor which is delta times v input over the switching frequency times the ripple so this will be how much it will be 320 micro henry so now we have two values for the inductor let's compare between these two values and see which one of these uh, inductor values we should use for this um, converter so let's make the comparison now so let's recall again these two um, cases the first one we said that uh, the voltage can be changing from 5 volt and the output is how much is 10 volt but for the other uh, case the input can be 8 volt the maximum and the output is should be kept to 10 volt when the input is 5 volt so we said that uh, the duty cycle in this case is equal to 0.5 and the duty cycle for the other side is equal to how much 0.2 the inductor current when the duty cycle is 0.5 is 2 amperes this is i l 2 amperes and the ripple for this inductor current is equal to how much? 20% must be kept 20%. So this delta I L is equal to 0.4 amperes. When the duty cycle is 0.2, we found that the inductor current is equal to how much? Smaller, which is 1.25 amperes. And the ripple in this case, 20%, which is of course smaller, 0.25 amperes. Finally, uh, we found the, the inductor value that makes uh, this ripple. It was 312.5 microhenry. And this one, of course, to keep the 20% maximum ripple. For the other side, 320 microhenry to keep 20% ripple in this case. So which inductor should we use? The 320 microhenry? Or the 312 micro Henry. So here we have to work on the, we have to consider the worst case. The worst case, we have to keep the minimum ripple. In order to, uh, in order to keep the minimum ripple, so we have to make sure that our ripple does not exceed the smallest value of the ripple, which is 0.25. Here is the ripple is 0.4. So of course, if we operate at smaller duty cycle, we will exceed this ripple. So we have to take the smallest ripple, which is 0.25, and the largest inductor, which is 320 micro Henry. So this is the value for the inductor. Now let's go and find the value for the capacitor. From today's lecture, we said the capacitor value must be equal to delta over R times the switching frequency times the ripple for the uh, voltage on the capacitor, which is delta V out over V out. Now again, which value for the duty cycle should we use? Should we use the 0.5 duty cycle or we should use the 0.2 duty cycle? Again, here we have to consider the worst case. The worst case means minimum ripple. Minimum ripple means larger capacitor. Larger capacitors means larger duty cycle these the capacitor and the duty cycle proportion to each other so we have to use the 0.5 duty cycle so the capacitor is equal to 0.5 over the resistor value which is 10 the switching frequency 20 kilohertz and the ripple we said must not exceed the four percent on the output side so the capacitor value is equal to 62.5 microfarads so by this way we designed uh, this boost converter 
we assigned the values for the capacitor and the inductor and we made sure that the ripple does not exceed 4% on the capacitor side by using this capacitor and using 320 micro Henry uh, inductor the ripple will never exceed the 20% on the inductor side tell me if you find uh, the same values for the capacitor or inductors or uh, if you have any other thoughts i'll be happy to uh, hear from you and uh, i hope that you enjoyed uh, this lecture and uh, see you next time